passages comes out of something I read or something I, I, I saw. And so I, I, this is the second time I've, I've read through this book. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorite pastors. His name is Jim Simbala. Simbala. I call him Simbala. Mary says Simbala. Anyway, he's the head pastor at the Brooklyn Tabernacle in New York. And uh, if you ever read any of his writing, any of his books, there, he's a man, this guy has simple means. He's not been to seminary. He's led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, he wrote a book called Spirit Rising. He's also, uh, there's three other books, the Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And, and what's, what I love about these books, it, it talks about, and he, he, it gives you testimonies of transformed lives, people that, were, that you would think that were, they didn't have a chance in life, but they, they've, the spirit of the living God has transformed them. And uh, so I want to talk about that. And, and you don't hear much preaching, and we do. Joe touched on it when he touched on his message of rest for your soul. Well, the only way to have that rest for your soul is when you, press the flesh and all that other stuff down and you you depend on the spirit you know and and what is that spirit who is the holy spirit you know josiah had a song the second song the father the son and the holy spirit the three in one and i'm going to i'm going to share with you what symbola says in his book of who the holy spirit who is the holy spirit because i've been to a lot of churches where they say the holy spirit was there and there's a lot of crazy things happening you know, this day and age, we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit and people are, we laugh and run the aisles and some people do. Some people, you go to some churches, they get slain by the Spirit and, and I'm not discounting being slain by the Spirit at all. Don't get, I've never had that happen to me, but I, there's a lot of things that I haven't had happen to me that others have experienced. But there's some crazy things and it kind of, kind of we push back and we kind of get scared about that. But what I want to look at today is, is what, we're going to look in God in the Scripture and what Jesus says about the Holy Spirit, because that's the truth and what I believe in is what God's Word. As a matter of fact, we'll go on to say it's it's the Spirit of Truth, and the Spirit of Truth, which is the Holy Spirit, everything you get is going to line up with this, with God's Word, and it's it's not difficult to understand. You don't have to be a, a seminary scholar or a theologian, and I've been a, a Matter of fact, there's a spirit-filled man standing in the back of the church that's not had a lot of training, but boy, I've heard a lot of great messages. Yeah, he's tell you, he'll come around. He's also humble, you know. So, but, but praise God, we're going to look at that. But let me let, tell you what Symbola, Symbola says. He says, he goes, the Holy Spirit is a real person. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit is a real person. It says, the third and co-equal member of the Trinity. We all we know about Jesus. We know about God the Father and the stories about God the Father. Jesus the Son, he walked on the, on the, in flesh, he walked on the face of the earth. Well, co-equal to that is the Holy Spirit. It's the three in one. The Holy Spirit is real. There's no getting around it. That small voice that you hear, if you're a believer, a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, when you're doing something you shouldn't be and and there's something speaking to you, there's something welling up in you that you know it's wrong, well, guess what? That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And it says, <clears throat> so it's the co-equal member of the Trinity. Though he is often overlooked or perhaps even neglected by many 21st century Christians, he is just as divine as the Father and the Son. And you can look that up in Acts chapter 5, 3 and 4. And he said, consider these facts. And I'm going to give you some scriptures. You can look them up on your own. But uh, he said... He possesses a divine personality and personally chooses people for ministry assignments. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's an advocate. He's a helper. He exhorts us, and he, he assigns us. We, he gives us what we need to do and equips us of what we need to do. He communicates with us, and, it, and you can find that in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, to back what he just said up in that scripture. He said he communicates with us in Revelation 2, 7 and searches out the deep things of God to make them known to believers in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. He is the one who makes Christ a living reality to the believer, Ephesians 3, 16 through 17. And in fact, he's called the spirit of Christ in Romans 8 and 9. And that's in my message. We're going to look at that piece of scripture. We're going to have a little fun with that piece of scripture here this morning. And it's okay to have fun in church. I mean, it's okay. And it says he is co-equal with both the Father and the Son as part, as, the, as part of the mystery of the triune God. 
Understanding these biblical facts about the Holy Spirit within the larger biblical story of God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how he relates to his people is important. So let's look at that. If you want to take the, the text today, first of all, let's pray. Let's pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day today, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to stand in the presence of your people, Lord God, and be able to uh, preach the word. Uh, Lord God, that, that is a privilege, and, and Lord, I don't take that lightly. So I just pray, Lord God, for your divine intervention this morning, this Father. I don't want anybody to hear from me, Lord, because you know I'm just a fool. <laughs> I'm just a tool. So, Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, that uh, everything I say up here, Lord God, lines up with your word. And, Lord God, it's not misunderstood. And, Lord God, it changes lives, Lord God, because only your word can change lives, Lord God, and transform lives, Lord. As we're going to look at that in your word today, Lord, and we just praise you and thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I went over to, to uh, John chapter, the Gospel of John. And the, and the text is out of John 14, 15 through 21. That's our text. But for me to, for, to, to understand the text and what Jesus is talking about, you kind of have to back up. You've got to go back in 13, 14, up in 14, and read a little beforehand. Because I always tell people all the time, if you're studying God's word, don't just pick a piece of scripture and say, ooh, that's what it is. I call it, it's, I always go two or three chapters before, two or three chapters after. That way we got the context of the, the message of, of what's going on in the scripture. You always need to know what the context. Because we're bad about taking a piece of scripture out of there and saying, brother, this piece of scripture is for you. And it's really, it's, 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 it's not what God's trying to say there in the context of the scripture. And it's, it's very important to do that. And there again, you don't have to be a theologian to do that. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy to do that, you know. There's a piece of scripture, and, and, and I've used it before in the Old Testament. Uh, I should have looked it up, but it says, it's by his stripes that we were healed. Well, and we are, we are healed, but some people take that by his stripes we are healed and use that as a, as a physical healing. Well, no, in the context of that scripture, it's, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that healed us so we could be born again. But it's, it's also, it, so we've got to understand our, the, the context of the scripture. And what's happening in the context of this scripture right here is, is Jesus is, this is before, his, his, he's going to be persecuted, he's going to die, he's going to, there's a lot of things that are going to happen to these disciples and he's trying to get them ready. So in chapter 13, if you start in chapter 13, the first teaching, he's, it's about Jesus washing their feet. Well, here's a message here. He's going to teach them a message about being a servant. Of being a, a, a lowly servant in those days, you know, to be washing his Jesus' feet. You know, that's what he's teaching his disciples. How many in here is a disciple of Christ? I see a lot of hands going up. So I believe we probably got a lot of foot washers in here. Understanding that, have you ever had your feet washed by somebody in a church? I have. It's a moving, it's, I remember Pastor Bruce doing that to me. And I'll tell you what, it just brought me to my knees. It's a humbling experience, and, but it's, it's a very, very, very good teaching tool about of that, of humbling and, and what a servant looks like and what a servant is to be. And it's not just about washing feet. It's about that, that person that's in the gutter that might be drunk, that's having a rough time and a rough go in his life. It's about going and picking that person up and helping. You know, that's washing feet. There's a lot of ways we can wash feet. Operation Christmas Child, we can wash feet. That's what it's all about. That's the message there. So he, he's teaching them this message. And then he goes on. He, he, starts, he starts telling them about his betrayal, the, the betrayal of, of what's going to happen to him. And, you know, these guys are having a hard time with it. They're having a hard time of it. They, don't under, they truly do not understand to that point what's going to happen to Jesus. And he's... Well, what is he doing? He's trying to prepare. He's, he teaches them about his prayer. He predicts his betrayal. Right after that, he goes straight to Peter. Tells him he's going to deny him. Can you imagine how hard that was for Peter to hear? You know, Peter was the one that said, you are the rock. You're the son of God. That's who you are. But Jesus has to tell him, you're going to betray me. You're going to betray me, Peter. 
You're going to, when, when it all comes down, and, and I can't even think about what Peter was going through because that would have been tough. So he goes on to there. He, he, he predicts his denial. Then he says something to him. After that, he says, he gives him a new command. Anybody want to take a guess what that new command was? He says, I give you a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, them loving one another, everyone, everyone, my fan got me. He says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's a new command by Jesus. Seeing a lot of hands, the disciples, a lot of disciples here. How are we going to know if we're disciples of Jesus Christ? By loving one another. It's a simple concept, but it's hard to do sometimes. Matter of fact, there's times when, uh, I hate to say this, but my wife can be my enemy. Because we have, we're in a, a heated discussion, but that's no reason not to love, you know. And there's times, there's, there's, it's, it's easy, like I said, to love y'all here, but it's hard to love all the time. There's hard to be around people and love them. Believe me. But he commands us to love. And, and right there, and I don't want to take that scripture out of context too, because he's talking about one another. He's talking about the, the, the fellowship of the believers. That's what he's talking about right there. He's talking about those one another. Because guess what's going to, when, when, that, when that all goes down, they're going to need one another. Because Man, they're all going to have to run. And they're going to, and, and finally you're going to see that they come back together. <clears throat> and then it gets to, in chapter, in, 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 he, he promises the Holy Spirit. And that's where I want to go. And it says, in it, and I already went with the new command. So if, and if you look at your scripture in, in verse 15, uh, chapter 14, verse 15, he says, if you keep, if you love me, Keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. And I want to stop there and look at that. That's the command. That's, the, that's what he's telling them. Now, they're, not, they're having probably still a hard time comprehending this because they don't have yet what he was, about to, he was, want, what he was going to give them. That doesn't happen for quite a while in, in the Scripture when the Holy Spirit comes. But he's telling them about this advocate who is the spirit of truth. And in the Greek, an advocate, if you look at that, in the Greek term, it literally means one called alongside to help as, the, as of, one, of someone who encourages and exhorts. It's a helper. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is, is a helper. It's an advocate for us. It's an advocate for the believer, the born-again believer. We have the Holy Spirit. Because remember, Jesus said, well, I'm, I'm going somewhere. And he says, even, he tells them, I'm going to send one something better than Jesus. Better than I, he says. It's the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is, and that's who the Holy Spirit is. We, we hear it all the time, you know, we, we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and, and, and we even we, we look at it in Christ in us. It's, it's Christ in us in the form of the Holy Spirit, but it's the Spirit of Christ in us. That's what we receive when we come, we become born again. And when that happens to you, until that happens to you, you'll not be able to understand this, <laughs> this word right here. You have to be born again. You have to have the Spirit of the living God inside you to understand His word and to, to, to truly dis, to to make sense of it. Because if Paul talks about that, he says, and I've been there and done that with people. You know, I've had people challenge me. They, you know, they'll challenge me and say, well, you know what, I, you know, I'm the mayor, and they we hear this, and they say, well, what about that you're a pastor? And they'll start questioning me on the Bible. These are lost people that question me. I, you know what, I'm not debating it with them because they don't understand it. So what does Paul do? I've told you before, I share my testimony. I, I tell them where I was, boom. What happened? And you can have this too. But until that happens, I can't debate scripture. Now, if Mark comes to me and says, hey, I want to look at this scripture and I want to talk to you. Hey, let's go. Let's, let's talk about it. And, uh, and there's certain things we'll talk about that him and I, there's never a good, solid answer. There's never a clear answer in it. But 
we can say, hey, well, this is where we think this is, and, and until, it get, until it gets cleared up, it does. And, there, and, there, and the Bible says the secret things belong to God. There are certain things that are secret that we can't understand this side of heaven. And if you... And, Maybe if you feel like it, when you get to heaven, you can ask about it, but I don't think you will. You won't be worried about that anymore. <laughs> I believe we'll be just in the glory and the presence of the Lord. It's going to be an awesome place to be, and all that stuff's going to go away anyway. So, but he talks about that advocate. And, and if you look at Romans 8 and 9, and it says uh, <clears throat> he's going to be with you, he says he's going to be with you forever. And he's, he's talking about the believer. So if you look at Romans 8 and 9, it says... It says, you, are, however, are not in the realm of the flesh. Whew. Flesh, that's another one. That's a whole other subject that somebody could preach on forever. But flesh, we all have to deal with the flesh. It's just that this side of heaven, you have to deal with the flesh. You know, there's no getting around it. And now, what's in the flesh? I was talking to Mary just the other day. She started working at the daycare. She goes, you know, I can really see the heart of man when you watch these toddlers and these kids because they are some of them Jan and I were talking about it children today you know you don't have to tell them to do bad things they it comes natural it comes it's it's just all about it you know they know it we have to teach them to do good things God has to do the same thing with us you know this process we're on in sanctification it's it's a process it takes time but we we, we move forward in the spirit of truth but he says, but, but of the flesh, but, are, but we are in the realm of the spirit. If, put my glasses on. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, if the spirit, if you're, if you're here today and the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not, if the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So that we have to ask a question. How do I know if I have the Spirit of Christ in me? Anybody want to try it? You can go over to Galatians in 5, 20, 5, 22 and 23. Brother Mark, will you come up here? Here's where we're going to have a little fun. This man confesses to have the Spirit of Christ in him. He said he told me that. You know, I, be I believe he's a believer. Stand right there. Is Carla here? Very good. Now we're going to see if he's got it in here because we're going to check his family right there in the, set, the third row there because I'll tell you what, when I want to find out a man's circumstances and what's going on, I go to the house. If somebody wants to know something about Paul, visit with Mary or come live with us and you really get to see about it. And that's it. <coughs> you're, you're more than welcome. So if we, he possesses the spirit of Christ, which I believe he does because I see all this stuff played out. He's not perfect. I'm not saying he's perfect, but I, the fruit of the, <laughs> for the so the, the fruit of the Spirit transforms us all. I pray to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I submit to him as Lord and Savior. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's my ending, but not to right now. So, but he has this because 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Now, the kids don't know the old Mark. Carla probably knows some of the old Mark and some of the misgivings of the old Mark. Maybe not. But I've, he's shared his testimony with me and things that he thought and believed and that he's been through. So now what we're going to find out is, but, but to know the, if we have that is, we have these, these fruits of the Spirit. Galatians says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's the first one. Is this man loving? He's shown me his love. I, I got to get that, and hopefully everybody else has seen his heart in, in the love. So let's give him a good there, okay? A check mark? Is that okay? We all on the same page? You know, if there's something he's not, you tell me because we got to work with him. I'm going to have to put him back in discipleship training. And that's okay because, and, I, and he'll accept it because he's my brother in Christ. That's the cool thing about doing this is because I have this right because of my brother in Christ, just as he is called, has to call me out on things he's, that, I, that doesn't measure with God's word. So, we have the love good. What about joy? Does he express some joy at all? Yeah, I think he's pretty joyous, you know. And, and you know what? In that joy, it, it doesn't come from material wealth. He don't have a lot of that. <laughs> it God's provision, but, but still has joy no matter what. So I'm good. Nathaniel, can we give him a check mark for joy? That's two. Ooh, that's pretty. He's getting, he's getting up there. 
It is. <laughs> it is embarrassing. But hey, be embarrassed, brother. But because you're, you're an example. You know, you're an example of Christ. You're a disciple of Christ. Peace. Surely he's not very peaceful. He's pretty peaceful. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why aren't we all peaceful? Because Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Man, I want peace. I want peace in my life. Good. He's three. He's got three of them down. Whew. This is a tough one. Forbearance. He's forbearing. And you know what? Pardon me? George and Mary, he's, he's putting up with this. He's forbearing. Absolutely. It's pretty tough for him to be up here. But yeah, but no, it is. We have to, there's times when have, we have to swallow our pride and we, we're forbearing. You know, we put up with some stuff. Uh, so he's good. What about kindness? Surely he's not a kind person. He's kind. He's a pretty kind person. So he's good there. Goodness. I think he's good with that. He's a pretty good guy. Okay, don't be getting proud up here. Now. I'll have to knock you down here, brother. <laughs> this is one we're going to get him on. Is he faithful? Faithfulness? Yeah, he's a faithful man. If he tells you he's going to be there, he'll be there. And if he's not, he'll let you know he's not going to be there. You get, you get it on faithfulness. Oh. Now, he said, look at how hard and big and crusty he is. What about gentleness? Yeah, he's a gentle giant. I'm going to give him gentle, too. You know, he, He's gentle and self-controlled. You know, he, he practiced self-control. There's times, and I've heard him preach, but it's, you get tempted to look at things or do things you shouldn't do. It's tempting, but with the spirit of truth in him, we practice self-control. So he, he hit all the check marks. And I wanted to say that, too, is with the forbearance, too, with what Carla and Mark and this whole family has gone through with, with Mariah. That's really tough when you've got a child that you just, you're begging God, and, and, but, but you know what? He's still, no matter what, God is on the throne. And, and he forbear, and he's going he's gonna to forbear that. And you're all going to do that. So praise God. Mark, thank you very much, brother. That's right. That's right. What is this? Wait a minute. What is, wait a minute. What is Galatians uh, 2.20 say? For I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. Amen. I guess he, 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 he told us that scripture when he was teaching us at, the, uh, at a men's class we did over at the Pregnancy Resource Center. Uh, he taught a class on, on biblical manhood, and, and that scripture kept rolling around. And I've heard him preach that in his church, too. And, that, and that's all of our prayer right here. It's, 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 it is. It's Christ in us, you know. So, so that's good. So those are things we need to look at, you know. And if you're a Christian... You need, to, you need to see this stuff, for, and, and not to judge anybody, but it, and it happened to me over the weekend with a good friend of mine. He's got a, he's got a co-worker. There's, he's always works with this guy, but the guy is not a believer. He believes. Oh, he believes in God, and he believes that Jesus Christ died on the cross, but he don't believe in a lot of other things. Well, there's some things that come along with that. I have to look at the fruit. And then we had debated, well, is this guy, is he going to go to heaven or is he going to go to hell? And we don't really know, but, but somewhere along the line, folks, we gotta, we got to have an understanding. If we're going to reach and talk to a lost person, they're going to have to hear that if you keep doing what you're doing, according to what God's word says, not me, you could die and go to hell. And there's nothing, that's something we all need to do. We all need to be seeing that because there's a lot of people around us that we keep our mouths shut that are dying and going to hell. We should say something. You know it, I've done it. The Spirit says, just say a word, just say something. Not to condemn them, it's because you love them. So I don't know about you, everything I read in this book about hell, it's nowhere. I don't want my worst enemy to go there. I don't. And I just, but it, those are the hard times. And that's when, that's when you need the Spirit of truth in you. You need the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit. Because there's going to be a time when you ain't, you're not going to have your Bible and you're not going to have it a, a, a track to pull out of your pocket to share with somebody. You are going to have to, because you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to share a hard truth with somebody. You're going to have to, you're, it's, it's going to happen. It should happen to you. If it's not happening to you, you need to quit hanging around church and get out there in the world. Because the world is full of people that need Jesus. That's all there is to it. And I'll tell you right now, when Jesus comes back, He's not going to Washington, D.C. Guess where he's coming? Where he went? He's coming to the church. 
He never ever went to, went to, to, to Rome and turned over the tables. Where'd he go? He went to the church because they were screwing up over there and they were taking advantage of people. The church is what he's going to hold accountable. And in Christ Jesus, man, we have nothing. To, we, we're washed by the blood. Praise the Lord, we're washed by the blood. And he goes on and, 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 and goes back, and let me go back into the scripture. And I like that forever, and the, and the spirit of truth. And let me, let me hit the spirit of truth. And it says, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of, is the spirit of truth. It's, it's, it's Christ's spirit in us. That's what I said. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. He is the spirit of truth in that he has the source of truth and communicates the truth to his own. So if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are a born-again believer, he speaks to you through his word. So if you're a little bit lax on reading the word, get back in it because I'll tell you what, he'll speak to you. I don't care how many times you've been through it. You read it a hundred times if you want but he'll speak to you, this, the truth, he'll speak to you in his word. That's where he spoke, that's where he speaks to me most times when I'm in his word or, or I'm, I'm reading a, an encouraging book that has, it's loaded with scripture. And that's why I, I, I read, very seldom do I read anything secular. It's always teachers, Bible teachers and, and stuff that's going to encourage me. I don't need to have, I don't need to read about what's going on in the world. I hear about it and see it. So and, that, and that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be with his, with his word and, and the spirit of truth. And if you drop down, and it, let, me, let me finish up the scripture, what I was wanting through 21. And he says, <clears throat> and, and back in that, it says, after the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. And I talked about that. Worldly people and the lost, they don't, they don't have a clue because God hasn't opened their eyes and their ears to receive him yet. It says, but you know him, for he lives within you and will be in you. There again, remember he's talking to the, he's talking to the disciples who are going to face this trial and tribulation that's coming up. And he says he's going to be, he's going to be with them. He's going to go with them through the trial. And, and he's talking about that spirit. Well, when does the spirit land on these guys? You remember in the story? It's not in the Gospel of John, but the, the next book after is Acts. Pentecost. That's when the transformation takes place. Remember the story? They're in the room. Because Jesus said, hang together. I'm coming. I'm going to send him. And Jesus spends the Holy, sends the Holy Spirit to these guys. And he, and he sends it to these guys. And I'll tell you what. If you look at their stories, and if you look at one story, one guy, Peter, the guy that denied him, the, the spokesman for the group, he was always on the front. He was always ready to give Jesus an answer for everything. And, and he fleed, you know. But once Pentecost came, in Acts chapter 2, let me read what he says about Peter. This is when the Holy Spirit came, and Peter took, took note of it and was filled. It says, perhaps the best way to understand what Jesus meant by saying it would be better for the disciples after he left. We talked about that. He was going to send this advocate to look at, at the life of Peter. It says, in the Gospels, Peter often spoke at the wrong time, misunderstood the meaning of Jesus' teachings, and tended towards boasting of his superiority over the other disciples. They all did that. Oh, I want to be, but let me sit, John and Jay, they all wanted to boast, and that, well, can, can my son sit at the, to your right hand? It says, but when Jesus was arrested, Peter not only fled, but he also cursed and denied even knowing Jesus. That's Peter. That's the man. It says, it says, why was, why was Peter so weak and mistake prone? How could Peter deny the Messiah who has selected him as part of the inner circle and who worked countless miracles right before his eyes? He walked with Jesus for three years. He's seen him feed the fish. He's seen all kind of miracles that Jesus performed. He was his disciple. I mean, what better man to have you disciple you than Jesus Christ? And Peter sat with, with three years he sat with. They all sat with him for that. Didn't Peter have a gifted teacher? Yes, it was Jesus himself. Did Peter lack a great role model and example to follow? No, he had the perfect role model in Jesus Christ in the flesh. So then what did all those educational and inspirational resources do for Peter? Not enough. On the night Jesus was repaired and arrested, Peter fled like everyone else. 
With three and a half years of excellent discipleship and under his belt, Peter learned the harsh truth we all, had conf we all have confronted. It's one thing to know the word, but it's quite another to obey it. Even the, the best discipleship training and spiritual accountability proved insufficient for Peter because no outward teaching can compare with the inward power of the Holy Spirit. What transformed Peter was the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit came on to Peter, that's when the story begins. And I encourage you to read Acts and read about Peter and what he did. He had power. He had power to, to preach the gospel message to these people that were eventually killing. Wasn't going to flee anymore. He had power. And it wasn't, he didn't have Jesus alongside of him coaching him. He had the advocate. He had the Holy Spirit. And there was no stopping him. There was no stopping any of them. You know, they, uh, they went and they boldly preached. And guess what happened when they preached? God added to their number. You know, we look in the churches, we look at the church, and we think about how we can add to our number. Well, we think, well, we need to do this. We need to make it more comfortable. We need to do this. Well, there, you know, guess what? They're added to their number. There's a story in Acts about Ananias and Sapphira. They lied to the Holy Spirit. And guess what happened? They killed, they killed him. Can you imagine if you come forward and God told you to give this and you didn't and you dropped dead on the floor? Well, that will really added to church numbers, won't it? <laughs> but it did back then. You know, because they were fearful of God. They feared him in a way that they cared and they loved him. You know, and they knew his power. And these men, had, they possessed the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and if you look at that life, and it is, and it's just, it's incredible. It's just incredible, the stories that go on. And Joe, can you come forward? Where is Joe? Is he back in the booth? He had said he wants to play a song at the end, and I appreciate that because I hated to even come up here and preach. I was so encouraged by the worship, and uh, I'm still on. But uh, I, look at the, I look at the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'll tell you what, I, I want to move in the Spirit. I'm going to move in the Spirit because there's no other way. There's no other way is not to move in the spirit and have the spirit of God in you. And it's, and it's, and it's something you have it. If you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, you have it. But sometimes we, we push it back because we get, we get a little bit fearful and, and that happens. You know, it's a big cruel world out there, but it was a big cruel war for Peter and, and, the, and the men that were, they were spreading the good news of the gospel. You look at Paul's trial and tribulation, what he went through because he was led by the spirit. He, he, had a, he had a visit with the Lord Jesus Christ and was changed. What changed about Paul was his, his mission. Paul was always a worker. He, he worked for God in the beginning, and then Jesus transformed his life, and then he sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ and went through a lot of trial and tribulation. And that's where I want to be. That's my hero in the Bible is the Apostle Paul, and I, do, I read a lot about him and, and, and his, his faithfulness and everything we talked about there. And, and Paul writes, and in, in to close, in, in, in Colossians 1.27, Paul writes, To God, to God, to them God has chosen. Born again believer in Jesus Christ, God has chosen you. God has, God has laid it on, God has put it in your heart to be a follower of Jesus Christ. God laid it on your heart. You know? You're a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're born again. God has chosen them <clears throat> to mark, to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of the mystery. To those it is a mystery. To us it's a reality. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory be to God. Everything we do is glory be to God. Mark's the man he is today. Praise be and glory be to God. It's not anything he ever did. I put him up here. It's Christ in him. And he, he followed up. He's a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's all about one word, two words really. It's submission and obedience. First of all, we have to submit. That's where we get a problem in the church is, is the problem. Jesus, I want you in my life, but... I'm not right, quite ready to make you Lord of my life. Because when you make him Lord, life changes. It's not I, but it's Christ. You know, that's the key. 
And the biggest issue and, and the hardest thing I've ever had with dealing with people that, are, that have messed up their lives is they're not willing to submit. They won't submit to anybody. They, sh they won't submit to a boss at work. They won't submit. They've not submitted to their parents. They've not submitted to anything. They won't, and they will not submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. But when they do submit, when you give it all and you submit, I guarantee your life's going to change because it's when you're in submission, you know, you, you, you are saying, here it is, Lord. It's not I, but you. It's no longer about me anymore. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. What will you have me to do? When anybody calls me and says, how can I help you? And that's what our can is. Lord, what's next? What do you go? I don't know what's next for Mary and I, you know, and for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm starting to think about what retirement's going to look like. You know, I'm not going to no longer probably go up the highway in about a year, eight months, Lord willing. But my plans aren't God's plans. You know, I, I got a plan, but it's got to line up with God's word and it's got to line up with God, what he wants, you know. And I see this time and time again, we make all these plans, but it might not be what God wants, you know. So I'm praying about that and pray for me. Pray for me and Mary, what, what's next for us in our lives, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to it because I'll tell you what, lady, it's been quite a ride, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been. The ride's not over, but I'll tell you what, it's been fun. I just, it's been trying at times, and it's been hard, but I'll tell you what, when you submit and you follow him, it's not hard. It's just, it's just, here you go. And you know what? Just like saying, Lord, Lord, send me. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to send all of us. We live in a hard, hurt, and it's all around us, folks. And this is our Jerusalem right here, little St. Genevieve. You know what, and if you, you might not see much here, but go up to Baden and do some ministry up there. Go up to see Larry Rice at the homeless mission up there and see what he's going through. And you can see the hard, you know. And, and when we go to Africa, that's one thing I encourage you. You don't have to go to all the way to Africa to see it. You can see it in the United States. If you can get a chance to go to Mexico or some of these other places. That's what America, the problem we have in America is we've got it too good. I'll tell you, we got it easy, folks. Tell you what, we, we, we've got it made. You know what, and there's a whole lot of folks out there that are, that are living a, a rough life, you know, and, and we should have a heart for them. So that's my hope and prayer for you is, is, is use the, the Holy Spirit is, is in you. Use the Holy Spirit, the advocate that's with you. He'll never leave you. God, the board said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. No matter where you're at, you can be surrounded by your enemies, you pray, you cry out to God, he'll answer your prayer. He'll come to you, or he'll take you home. And that ain't bad, all that bad either. I'm looking forward to the day when I'm going to be in heaven. Because guess what? This is not my home. I'm just passing through. Praise be unto God. Let's pray. Oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for the spirit that, that's in it, us, Lord God. And I, that's my prayer in here this morning, Lord God. If, if someone doesn't have the spirit, Lord God, I know they're, they're, you're nudging at their heart, Lord, and, and, and Lord God, they don't want to admit to that. But Father God, I just pray, like me, Lord God, that you just work through them, with them, Lord God, and reveal yourself to them, Lord, because your word says in Jeremiah, Lord, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And Lord God, we want to have hearts to seek you and know you, Lord God. We want to worship you, Lord. When we come into this place every morning, Lord, every Sunday morning, Lord, it's all about you. And that's what it's all about, Lord God. It's not about everything going on around us. This is your day because this is the day that you have made, Lord God, and we want to rejoice and be glad. So again, Lord, I just pray for all your disciples here this morning, Lord God, all the, all the people that call this their church home, Lord God. I pray that we just continue to encourage one another and love one another, Lord God. If there's a need here this morning, Lord God, and, and have them speak up, Lord God, because there's brothers and sisters here that, Lord, will help carry the burden, will help lighten the load, Lord God, because, Lord God, your word says, we're your hands and feet, Lord Jesus. God, you use us, Lord. We praise you and thank you and pray our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Christ. You're a disciple of Christ. Peace. Surely he's not very peaceful. He's pretty peaceful. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why aren't we all peaceful? Because Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Man, I want peace. I want peace in my life. Good. He's three. He's got three of them down. Whew. This is a tough one. Forbearance. He's forbearing. And you know what? Pardon me? George and Mary, he's, he's putting up with this. He's forbearing, absolutely. It's pretty tough for him to be up here. but Yeah, but no, it is. We have to, there's times when we have, we have to swallow our pride and we, we're forbearing. You know, we put up with some stuff. Uh, so he's good. What about kindness? Surely he's not a kind person. He's kind. He's a pretty kind person. So he's good there. Goodness, I think he's good with that. He's a pretty good guy. Don't, get, don't be getting proud up here now. I'll have to knock you down here, brother. This is one we're going to get him on. Is he faithful? Faithfulness? Yeah, he's a faithful man. If he tells you he's going to be there, he'll be there. And if he's not, he'll let you know he's not going to be there. You get, you get it on faithfulness. Oh. Now, he said, look at how hard and big and crusty he is. What about gentleness? Yeah, he's a gentle giant. I'm going to give him gentle, too. You know, he, He's gentle and self-control. You know, he, he practiced self-control. There's times, and I've heard him preach, but it's, you get tempted to look at things or do things you shouldn't do, it's tempting, but with the spirit of truth in him, we practice self-control. So he, he hit all the check marks. And I wanted to say that too is with the forbearance to with what Carla and Mark and this whole family has gone through with, with Mariah. That's really tough when you got a child that you just you're begging God and and but but you know what? He still, no matter what, God is on the throne. And, and he forbear, and he's gonna he's gonna forbear that, and you're all gonna do that. So praise God, Mark. Thank you very much, brother. That's right. That's right. What is this? Wait a minute. What is? Wait a minute. What is Galatians uh, two twenty say? For I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Amen. I guess he, 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 he told us that scripture when he was teaching us at, the, uh, at a men's class we did over at the Pregnancy Resource Center. Uh, he taught a class on, on biblical manhood, and, and that scripture kept rolling around. And I've heard him preach that in his church, too. And, that, and that's all of our prayer right here. It's, 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 it is. It's Christ in us, you know. So, so that's good. So those are things we need to look at, you know. And if you're a Christian, you need to, you need to see this stuff. For the, and not to judge anybody, but it, and it happened to me over the weekend with a good friend of mine. He's got a he's got a coworker. There's, he's always works with this guy, but the guy is not a believer. He believes. Oh, he believes in God, and he believes that Jesus Christ died on the cross, but he don't believe in a lot of other things. Well, there's some things that come along with that. I have to look at the fruit, and then we had debated. Well, is this guy is he going to go to heaven or is he going to go to hell? And we don't really know. But, but somewhere along the line, folks, we gotta, we got to have an understanding. If we're going to reach and talk to a lost person, they're going to have to hear that if you keep doing what you're doing, according to what God's word says, not me, you could die and go to hell. And there's nothing, that's something we all need to do. We all need to be seeing that because there's a lot of people around us that we keep our mouths shut that are dying and going to hell. We should say something. You know it. I've done it. The Spirit says, just say a word, just say something. Not to condemn them, it's because you love them. So I don't know about you, everything I read in this book about hell, it's nowhere. I don't want my worst enemy to go there. I don't. And I just, but it, those are the hard times. And that's when, that's when you need the Spirit of truth in you. You need the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit. Because there's going to be a time when you ain't, you're not going to have your Bible, and you're not going to have it, a, a, a track to pull out of your pocket to share with somebody you are going to have to because you are a disciple of Jesus Christ you're going to have to share a hard truth with somebody you're going to have to you're, it's, it's going to happen it should happen to you if it's not happening to you you need to quit hanging around church and get out there in the world because the world is full of people that need Jesus that's all there is to it and I'll tell you right now when Jesus comes back he's not going to Washington D.C. guess where he's coming where he went he's coming to the church he never ever went to went to 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 Rome and turned over the tables. Where'd he go? He went to the church because they were screwing up over there and they were taking advantage of people. 
The church is what he's going to hold accountable. And in Christ Jesus, man, we have nothing. To, we, we're washed by the blood. Praise the Lord, we're washed by the blood. And he goes on and, 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 and goes back, and let me go back into the scripture. And I like that forever, and the, and the spirit of truth. And let me, let me hit the spirit of truth. And it says, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of, is the spirit of truth. It's, it's, it's Christ's spirit in us. That's what I said. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. He is the spirit of truth in that he has the source of truth and communicates the truth to his own. So if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are a born-again believer, he speaks to you through his word. So if you're a little bit lax on reading the word, get back in it because I'll tell you what, he'll speak to you. I don't care how many times you've been through it. You read it a hundred times if you want, but he'll speak to you. This, the truth, he'll speak to you in his word. That's where he spoke. That's where he speaks to me most times when I'm in his word or, or I'm, I'm reading a, an encouraging book that has it's loaded with scripture. And that's why I, I, I read very seldom do I read anything secular. It's always teachers, Bible teachers, and, and stuff that's going to encourage me. I don't need to have, I don't need to read about what's going on in the world. I hear about it and see it. So, and, that, and that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be with his, with his word and, and the spirit of truth. And if you drop down, and he, let, me, let me finish up the scripture, what I was wanting through 21. And he says, <clears throat> and, and back in that, it says, after the spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. And I talked about that. Worldly people and the lost, they don't, they don't have a clue because God hasn't opened their eyes and their ears to receive him yet. It says, but you know him, for he lives within you and will be in you. There again, remember he's talking to the, he's talking to the disciples who are going to face this trial and tribulation that's coming up. And he says he's going, to be, he's going to be with them. He's going to go with them through the trial. And, and he's talking about that spirit. Well, when does the spirit land on these guys? You remember in the story? It's not in the Gospel of John, but the, the next book after is Acts. Pentecost. That's when the transformation takes place. Remember the story? They're in the room. Because Jesus said... Hang together, I'm coming. I'm going to send him. And Jesus spends the Holy, sends the Holy Spirit to these guys. And he, and he sends it to these guys, and I'll tell you what. If you look at their stories, and if you look at one story, one guy, Peter, the guy that denied him, the spokesman for the group, he was always on the front. He was always ready to give Jesus an answer for everything. And, and he fleed, you know. But once Pentecost came, in Acts chapter 2, You read what he says about Peter. This is when the Holy Spirit came and Peter took, took note of it and was filled. It says, perhaps the best way to understand what Jesus meant by saying it would be better for the disciples after he left. We talked about that. He was going to send this advocate to look at, at the life of Peter. It says, in the Gospels, Peter often spoke at the wrong time, misunderstood the meaning of Jesus' teachings, and tended towards boasting of his superiority over the other disciples. They all did that. Oh, I want to be, but let me sit, John and Jay, they all wanted to boast, and well, can, can my son sit at the, to your right hand? It says, but when Jesus was arrested, Peter not only fled, but he also cursed and denied even knowing Jesus. That's Peter. That's the man. It says, it says, why was, why was Peter so weak and mistake prone? How could Peter deny the Messiah who has selected him as part of the inner circle and who worked countless miracles right before his eyes? He walked with Jesus for three years. He's seen him feed the fish. He's seen all kind of miracles that Jesus performed. He was his disciple. I mean, what better man to have you disciple you than Jesus Christ? And Peter sat with, with three years he sat with. They all sat with him for that. Didn't Peter have a gifted teacher? Yes, it was Jesus himself. Did Peter lack a great role model and example to follow? No, he had the perfect role model in Jesus Christ in the flesh. So then what did all those educational and inspirational resources do for Peter? Not enough. On the night Jesus was repaired and arrested, Peter fled like everyone else. With three and a half years of excellent discipleship and under his belt, Peter learned the harsh truth we all, had we all have confronted. It's one thing to know the word, but it's quite 
another to obey it. Even the, the best discipleship training and spiritual accountability proved insufficient for Peter because no outward teaching can compare with the inward power of the Holy Spirit. What transformed Peter was the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit came on to Peter, that's when the story begins. And I encourage you to read Acts and read about Peter and what he did. He had power. He had power to, to preach the gospel message to these people that were eventually killing wasn't going to flee anymore. He had power, and it wasn't, he didn't have Jesus alongside of him coaching him. He had the advocate. He had the Holy Spirit, and there was no stopping him. There was no stopping any of them. You know, they, uh, they went, and they boldly preached, and guess what happened when they preached? God added to their number. You know, we look in the churches, we look at the church, and we think about how we can add to our number. Well, we think, well, we need to do this. We need to make it more comfortable. We need to do this. Well, there, you know, guess what? They're added to their number. There's a story in Acts about Ananias and Sapphira. They lied to the Holy Spirit. And guess what happened? They killed, they killed him. Can you imagine if you come forward and God told you to give this and you didn't and you dropped dead on the floor? Well, that really added to church numbers, won't it? <laughs> but it did back then. You know, because they were fearful of God. They feared him in a way that they cared and they loved him. You know, and they knew his power. And these men, had, they possessed the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and if you look at that life, and it is, and it's just, it's incredible. It's just incredible, the stories that go on. And Joe, can you come forward? Where is Joe? Is he back in the booth? He had said he wants to play a song at the end, and I appreciate that because I hated to even come up here and preach. I was so encouraged by the worship, and uh, I'm still on. But uh, I, look at the, I look at the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'll tell you what, I, I want to move in the Spirit. I'm going to move in the Spirit because there's no other way. There's no other way is not to move in the Spirit and have the Spirit of God in you. And it's, and it's, and it's something you have it. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you have it. But sometimes we, we push it back because we get, we get a little bit fearful. And, and that happens. You know, it's a big, cruel world out there. But it was a big, cruel war for Peter and, and, the, and the men that were, they were spreading the good news of the gospel. You look at Paul's trial and tribulation, what he went through, because he was led by the Spirit. He, he, had a, he had a visit with the Lord Jesus Christ and was changed. What changed about Paul was his, his mission. Paul was always a worker. He, he worked for God in the beginning, and then Jesus transformed his life, and then he sold out for the Lord Jesus Christ and went through a lot of trial and tribulation. And that's where I want to be. That's my hero in the Bible is the Apostle Paul. And I, do, I read a lot about him and, and, and his, his faithfulness and everything we talked about there. And, and Paul writes, and in, in to close, in, in, in Colossians 1.27, Paul writes, to God, to God, to them God has chosen. Born again believer in Jesus Christ, God has chosen you. God has, God has laid it on, God has put it in your heart to be a follower of Jesus Christ. God laid it on your heart. You know? You're a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're born again. God has chosen them. <clears throat> to mark, to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of the mystery. To those it is a mystery. To us it's a reality. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory be to God. Everything we do is glory be to God. Mark's the man he is today. Praise be and glory be to God. It's not anything he ever did. I put him up here. It's Christ in him. And he, he followed up. He's a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's all about one word, two words really. It's submission and obedience. First of all, we have to submit. That's where we get a problem in the church, is, is the problem. Jesus, I want you in my life, but I'm not right, quite ready to make you the Lord of my life. Because when you make him Lord, life changes. It's not I, but it's Christ. You know, that's the key. And the biggest issue and, and the hardest thing I've ever had with dealing with people that, are, that have messed up their lives is they're not willing to submit. They won't submit to anybody. 
they, sh they won't submit to a boss at work. They won't submit. They've not submitted to their parents. They've not submitted to anything. They won't. And they will not submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. But when they do submit, when you give it all and you submit, I guarantee your life's going to change because it's when you're in submission. You know, you 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 are saying, "Here it is, Lord. It's not I, but you." It's no longer about me anymore. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. What will you have me to do? When anybody calls me and says, how can I help you? And that's what our can is. Lord, what's next? What do you go? I don't know what's next for Mary and I, you know, and for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm starting to think about what retirement's going to look like. You know, I'm not going to no longer probably go up the highway in about a year, and eight months, Lord willing. But my plans aren't God's plans. You know, I, I got a plan, but... It's got to line up with God's word, and it's got to line up with God, what he wants, you know. And I see this time and time again. We make all these plans, but it might not be what God wants, you know. So I'm praying about that, and pray for me. Pray for me and Mary, what, what's next for us in our lives, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, because I'll tell you what, lady, it's been quite a ride, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been. The ride's not over, but I'll tell you what, it's been fun. I just... It's been trying at times, and it's been hard, but I'll tell you what, when you submit and you follow him, it's not hard. It's just, it's just, there you go. And you know what? Just like saying, Lord, Lord, send me. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to send all of us. We live in a hard, hurt, and it's all around us, folks. And this is our Jerusalem right here, little St. Genevieve. You know what? And if you, it, you might not see much here, but... Go up to Baden and do some ministry up there. Go up to the, see Larry Rice at the homeless mission up there. See what he's going through. And you can see the heart. You know, and, and when we go to Africa, that's one thing I encourage you. You don't have to go to all the way to Africa to see it. You can see it in the United States. If you can get a chance to go to Mexico or some of these other places. That's what America, the problem we have in America is we've got it too good. I'll tell you, we got it easy, folks. I'll tell you what, we, we, we've got it made. You know what? And there's a whole lot of folks out there that are, that are living a, a rough life, you know, and, and we should have a heart for them. So that's my hope and prayer for you is, is, is use the, the Holy Spirit is, is in you. Use the Holy Spirit, the advocate that's with you. He'll never leave you. God, the words say he'll never leave us nor forsake us. No matter where you're at, you can be surrounded by your enemies. You pray, you cry out to God, he'll answer your prayer. He'll come to you, or he'll take you home. And that ain't bad, all that bad either. I'm looking forward to the day when I'm going to be in heaven. Because guess what? This is not my home. I'm just passing through. Praise be unto God. Let's pray. Oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for the spirit that, that's in it, us, Lord God. And, I, and that's my prayer in here this morning, Lord God. If, if someone doesn't have the spirit, Lord God, I know they're, they're, you're nudging at their heart, Lord. Lord God, they don't want to admit to that. But Father God, I just pray, like me, Lord God, that you just work through them, with them, Lord God, and reveal yourself to them, Lord. Because your word says in Jeremiah, Lord, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And Lord God, we want to have hearts to seek you and know you, Lord God. We want to worship you, Lord. When we come into this place every morning, Lord, every Sunday morning, Lord, it's all about you. And that's what it's all about, Lord God. It's not about everything going on around us. This is your day because this is the day that you have made, Lord God, and we want to rejoice and be glad. So again, Lord, I just pray for all your disciples here this morning, Lord God, all the, all the people that call this their church home, Lord God. I pray that we just continue to encourage one another and love one another, Lord God. If there's a need here this morning, Lord God, and, and have them speak up, Lord God, because there's brothers and sisters here that, Lord, will help carry the burden, will help lighten the load, Lord God, because, Lord God, your word says we're your hands and feet, Lord Jesus. How'd you use us, Lord? We praise you and thank you and pray our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I 
find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I Bounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you never fail, and you won't start now. Just a quick thing here, and I know it's getting late, but uh, as you're leaving today, we have three trail men, the men that are in part of trail life, Josh and Braden and Luke. They're going to hand out a, a nice Bible booklet to you. Jerry Godfrey brought these this morning to share with us all. I want everybody to go home with one. 
This is a, they took, he took all four writers of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and he put them in the combined continuous story of Jesus' life. It's thrilling to read. And so we hope everybody will go home with one, and, and we thank the Lord for Jerry for bringing these to us. And Jerry, Jerry's a giver. Yep. You know, we all have a gift. His gift is obviously giving, and we appreciate it. So if you, uh, Luke and Braden and Josh, you want to go back and get set up, we're going to leave here in just a second. But uh, I was going to say, too, I appreciate Paul sharing this morning. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, it's all right from the scripture. Put into a continuous flow so you can just read the whole thing. It's kind of a neat idea. And the young man that funds us does it with his own money and he gives it out for free. And he's doing it all around the world. So it might make a good gift to put in our shoe boxes. So it might work for that. So, But as Paul was speaking, I remember when I first met with Paul and Joe, and I knew them for years before we came to church here, but I guess it's been about six years now. I met him out there, and I said, I think the Lord wants me to, and my family to start attending church here. And his first response, without hesitation, was, why in the world would you want to do that? <laughs> his next his next thing was, we're all dysfunctional here. <laughs> you remember that. <laughs> and I said, well, I, we'd fit right in then. Because <laughs> you know, don't you know, as you read the scriptures, Old and New Testament, God delights to use dysfunctional people. <laughs> so if you're dysfunctional this morning, raise your hand and say, Amen. <laughs> you qualify for, the, for the re, being a recipient of the grace of God. Because then he gets all the glory. He gets all the credit for raising the dead, for bringing light to the dark, and for healing the crippled. Let's close in prayer together. Lord, we bless you for the word this morning, for your word. Lord, let it, let it change us. Let it be what you've intended to do, Lord. Your word does not go back to you void, but it accomplishes the purpose for which you sent it out. Lord, accomplish your will and your word and help us to be light bearers and light givers today to those we meet. In Jesus' name, amen.